Welcome to Not Just Books. My name is Dolores Greenwald, Director of the Williamson County Public Library. Thank you for joining us today. And today we have some very special uh, guests with us. In our What's Hot in Books segment, we'll discuss literacy in Williamson County with Rita Dozier, Executive Director of the Literacy Council of Williamson County. In our Your World segment, we'll visit with Amy Saunders, Williamson County's new archivist. In today's Save the Date segment, we'll talk with Lori Rousseau, Recycling Specialist of Williamson County, and Andy Silbrock of Nashville Natives. They'll be discussing their fall planting campaign. And thank you again for joining us, and we'll be right back. Did you know that you can ask a librarian without being in the building? That's right, you can receive answers to questions or suggestions on where to find information at the library in our digital collections. Ask a Librarian is online with a form. You can email questions to the reference staff. Replies will be sent within three business days to the email address provided. Also, in-person staff are available at all branch li libraries by telephone. Call during regular business hours. It may come as no surprise that when the economy is in decline, fraud is on the rise. You have people who have been successful for the last 10 years, so they got a little something put away. Now, you know, they, they took their expense account, they cut their overtime, so now they're looking to increase their earning potential. Business opportunities can boom in a recession and in a, a downturn of the economy. Nobody in business is going to give you your money back if your business fails. You never saw me in your life you saw a commercial on TV, you got on the phone with me, you spoke to me for 10 seconds, I gave you some names to call, and I gave you some things to look up, and you called me back three days later, and I, you wrote me a check for $50,000. Does that sound a little screwed up? People want to believe that there is some opportunity that they can invest in that will guarantee that they will have financial success. There is no such thing. There just is no sure deal. None. The best advice I could give to anybody who's looking to purchase a business opportunity or purchase any investment over the phone is fast no's and slow yeses. Period. The end. Fast no's and slow yeses. Welcome back. In our What's Hot with Books segments, we are honored to have Rita Dozier, Executive Director of the Literacy Council of Williamson County. Thank you for joining us today, Rita. Thank you. You have a very interesting story you told me recently about how the Literacy Council got started. Would you tell, would you share with the viewers? Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite stories. <laughs> um, libraries are used to helping people with questions, information, all kinds of things. But a man walked into the library when it was uh, brand new, located at Five Points. A man walked to the front desk and said, I can't read, can you help me? And they didn't, they didn't have an answer for that. But as librarians are very quick-witted and quick on their feet, <laughs> decided to call Nashville Public Library, got information about the literacy program in Davidson County, and that was the beginning of the Literacy Council in Williamson County. And that was in 1986. I think that's great. I think that's great. What are um, some of the things the council's involved with now? Well, we've, we've really grown. Our mission has broadened because first, when, when I started in 1986, our, our mission was to work with adults who read below a fifth grade level. And I don't remember, I'm, I don't remember the census stats at that time, but um, we, we were busy with that. But uh, a few months later, we had an English as a second language component added. Kept getting phone calls, a, a woman from India, her mother-in-law was living with her and spoke no English, and so she was underfoot all the time and um, ne needed to get out of the house. So that was the beginning of our English as a Second Language program. Then we had the Kurdish family move in and that was beginning of um, ESL in the school system. They had 13 children. 
And um, last year, I think we had 30 different languages represented. Wow. When I left my office a minute ago, I had a group of about 12, 11 women, one man, and most of them were from South America, it looked like, but um, I'm, I'm not sure. People come to uh, Middle Tennessee for the jobs, for training, mm -hmm. for education, for all kinds of reasons. And um, it's really wonderful. The world has come to us. Exactly. Uh, learned so much about culture and customs, so it's an, it's an exciting time. We, so we offer um, conversation classes mm -hmm. for people from other countries. They, they get academic training through adult ed, Project Learn but they want time to practice in a safe environment so when they call the doctor's office, they know how to make an appointment. Or if they have to talk to their children's teachers, they know what to say, what to expect. Uh, we will, uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll be doing some sessions on Halloween because when you think about Halloween, if I told you that you needed to dress your child up in a costume, send him <laughs> out after dark, and beg for candy from strangers' houses, uh, <laughs> that makes no sense at all when you put, phrase it like That's that. True. So That's we, true. we are um, a clearinghouse of information for them. Uh, sometimes children have gotten in trouble on the bus when um, other children have said, be sure and call Mr. Smith this word mm -hmm. when it's not an acceptable term to call anyone. Mm -hmm. And so the, the child from another country gets in trouble, his parents don't understand. And so we have to explain words that aren't good to say. Uh, other other more important things, health re health purposes, and it's we offer a safe environment to ask questions. We also do private one on one GED tutorials that supplement what Project Learn offers. Uh, sometimes you might need fractions explained three mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Some people need them. 15 times, mm -hmm. but then they get it. So mm -hmm. we're, we're lucky that we get to do that. We also have volunteers working at the county jail with that GED program. Mm -hmm. And we have book clubs. We partner with the ARC of Williamson County with uh, Next Chapter Book Clubs mm -hmm. and for adults with disabilities. Always looking for new titles for those groups to read. Uh, we're getting ready to read a book, a sheep, about a sheep dog. I love that book. <laughs> and then I have book clubs in assisted and independent living okay. facilities. Very good. So we're always looking for new titles. Well, what are some of the books that you do select for people learning to read? We have workbooks for those. If someone, I have a, um, a man that I'm working with now, and he knows the alphabet, but he doesn't know the sounds. Now, this is a man that grew up in Alabama. He, mm -hmm. He's American-born, mm -hmm. and so he knows a lot, but he doesn't know how to, he lacks attack skills. So we use the Lawbach way to reading for him. Others, we have um, workbooks that, incorporate phonics and word recognition, sight words, all together. Mm -hmm. A multi-sensory approach is what we use with, with emerging readers. As adults, they, they have a lot of knowledge, but sometimes it's faulty knowledge. Mm -hmm. They also tend to guess more than children do. If it mm -hmm. starts with a P and ends in an E, it must be the word possible. <laughs> but it could be probable. Yeah. Or the the choices are, are endless there. So try to get them to slow down and um, not be quite as afraid of, of the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, in many ways, the, our volunteers are teachers or helpers, but they're also cheerleaders. Sometimes they need just some pats yeah, just, on the back or yeah. good job. Mm -hmm. We all need to hear that. That's good right. job. That's right. Uh, if someone watching wants to find out more about what you do, mm -hmm. how, can, how can they find out? You can call me, probably leave a message, but I will call you back. <laughs> and my number has changed as of this summer, and it is 224-3476. Seven one. A friend told me from another she's from another country. She said, "Why, when you say your number, do you speed up?" So I'm trying to be more aware of that <laughs> and say the numbers 
slowly. I think that's because we'll forget it if we don't say it. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so thank much you. for joining us Appreciate today, it. Rita, and we'll be right back. Want to build memories with your child? Turn off the TV and read. Reading is one of the best family activities around. It's free and without commercials. Hi, sweetie, let's read some books. Start with picture books for young children and build to storybooks and novels. But the car is still rusty. It stinks. Oh, pew, you. Vary the length and topic of what you're reading and read slowly enough so that your child can draw pictures in his mind about what is being read. Invite your child to turn the book's pages or pause and ask your child to predict what's going to happen next in the story. Mom, where happened to that car? God, I think it rolled right into the lake. Young children like to read the same book over and over. During repeat readings, stop at a key word and let your child fill in that word. Is that the after you finish reading a book, reflect on it together. Get an exchange of ideas going. Go outside, enjoy nature, take a walk in the park together. Stimulate your child's curiosity. Build memories. Read. This Choose Success Moment has been brought to you by the Middle Tennessee P16 Council. For more information about children and reading, contact your local school system. Welcome back. In our Your World segment today, I'm very privileged to have Amy Saunders, archivist with the Williamson County um, Archives. Earlier this year, Amy joined the archival team, and I'm delighted to have her here today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, tell us about yourself. Well, I uh, moved to Franklin about two and a half years ago and uh, was working at the library as you know, uh, <laughs> at the reference desk. And um, then I moved to uh, Special Collections for a couple months before I got the position at the archives. Now, I know you've been busy since you've been over there, yeah. but tell us a little bit about the archives. Well, the archives is a great place um, and for visitors or for researchers. We have all the county records you might need doing any kind of um, family research, marriage records. Uh, we also have um, death records for Tennessee on microfilm. But we have a lot of indexes. The previous uh, archivist, Louise Lynch, did an excellent job over her tenure at the archives. And we have so many indexes and Crofts references that help family genealogists um, linking together the probate mm -hmm. and land records, deeds, um, there's just, there's just a plethora of information for family researchers. But in addition to that, in the museum, we have many, many artifacts um, that document the way of life in um, Williamson County. So we're very fortunate to have both in the same building. So it is a great place to bring anybody who's in town and uh, you want a, a free place to learn a little bit more about um, beautiful Williamson County. Well, what's included in your museum? Well, we have everything from fossils, to carriages, we have a number of dresses, we have an iron collection, believe it or not. <laughs> then we have some military artifacts uh, from Williamson County veterans and also some from uh, the Battle of Franklin. Well, tell us a little bit about the Battle of Franklin because that's a very in of interest here. So what information do you have for the Battle of Franklin? Well, right now what we have is a great collection that we got from um, the Battleground Academy. And they had a donor who donated a number of artifacts, um, horse bridles, of course, lots of mini balls, um, some cannon shot. We have some guns. We have actually a set of um, boots from a union officer. Uh, yeah, it's, cool. it's really cool. <laughs> so there are a lot of things of great interest to look at and, in terms of artifacts in the museum about the Battle of Franklin. That's very, that's very good. You have your military collection yes. has a lot of uh, World War II 
pictures and yeah, pictures and artifacts, actually souvenirs um, that some of the soldiers picked up and brought home. So we have actually a Nazi flag, um, believe it or not. We have some Japanese uh, money. Uh, we have some rations, um, some MREs, meal ready to eat. <laughs> um, <laughs> and actually, a set, the most interesting thing is a little set that they would have given to the GIs, including matches, mm -hmm. um, a small box of cigarettes, mm -hmm. and a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> so I know that you've been busy making changes since you've been there, but what are some of your future plans? I know you went to an a conference recently, so when I go to a conference, I always get all kind of ideas and when I come back. Yes, of course, the big topic was electronic records, so I have my eye on getting some of our digital holdings in a more user-friendly interface um, for the future. Um, but also, one of the things I want to do is bring um, a little more variety to some of the exhibits because we have so many artifacts to showcase. It'll be nice to kind of put a spotlight on a few at a time. So right now, I have um, in a display case, some uh, class photos and um, school uh, artifacts from Williamson County Schools going from about the 1930s to the 60s. Um, so that's of interest. And also I have an exhibition from a, um, a museum that has a, no home as of right now, but the <laughs> Museum of American Military Experience. Oh. They collect artifacts and the stories behind um, those artifacts. And since they have no home, I thought that'd be a great thing to bring in and complement our military collections. So that's also um, on display right now. Now, is it, is it Tennessee? They are Tennessee veterans. Yes. That is, that's very Yeah, it's cool. really interesting. So you should, you should come by and take a look. Um, what are your hours of the archives? We are open Monday through Friday from 8 to 430. And you're located at a very central part of the city. Yes, yeah, a very central part, five points right across from the post office and Starbucks. Um, I appreciate you coming today. And Thank you. anything else you want to let viewers know about the archives? Um, can I say the website? Sure. We're at www.williamsoncounty-tn.gov slash county archives all together. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> and I promise you as Amy goes about what she does with the archives, the website's going to change because she's going to be doing some great new things. Yes, keep an eye on it. it will keep change. an eye. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And we'll be right back. Thank you for joining us. Did you know the library provides test proctoring? Residents of Williamson County may contact the library to prearrange a date and time to take a proctored exam. Arrangements are based on the availability of staffing and on the requested date. Welcome back. In our Save the Date segment, we have special guest Lori Rousseau, a recycling specialist with Williamson County, and Andy Subrock of Nashville Natives. Thank you both for joining us today. And why is it important to plant native species? Well, I'll tell you. Um, what I'm here to talk about today and what Andy's here to talk about today involves Keep Williamson Beautiful. and um, in addition to being the recycling specialist for the county, I also coordinate Keep Williamson Beautiful programs. And we are an affiliate of national nonprofit Keep America Beautiful. And so today, um, we're here to talk about a new Keep America Beautiful program called National Planting Day. The kickoff date was sept September 7th, and we were at Owls Hill Nature Sanctuary. Andy had some native plants for sale, and lots of folks were interested in mm -hmm. buying these plants. 
and learning more about planting native species. So I'll just give a little background okay. about this Keep America Beautiful program that we as an affiliate are promoting in Williamson County. It's an incentive to get growing America. Keep America Beautiful is proud to host the second annual National Planting Day starting September 7th. National Planting Day celebrates the value and power of native species in restoring ecological balance to the environment while creating greener, more beautiful communities. Um, so there are going to be activities happening throughout this fall that we're going to be um, getting the word out about so folks in Williamson County will plant some native species. Excellent. Well, Andy, what defines a native plant? That's a great question, and we really have to define uh, what region we're talking about. For example, in North America, uh, a saguaro cactus is a native plant, but a saguaro cactus is not native in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So we're really talking about regional natives, being that we're in Williamson County. We want to focus on plants uh, that are indigenous to this area, Middle Tennessee, that were here before uh, we showed up. Uh, those are the plants that have evolved and adapted to the local conditions and provide the most benefit to other species, be they uh, bird, butterfly, bee, or insect. What are yeah. some of the popular native plants? Well, some of the most popular that would be familiar would be uh, purple coneflower, black-eyed Susan, cardinal flower, uh, all of the oak trees, maple trees, the list goes on and on. In Tennessee, we are so blessed to have a rich diversity of native species. We have uh, plenty to work with. Excellent. And where are some good locations, Lori, to buy native plants? Well, that's what is so great about Williamson County because there are local resources to buy these native plants. And a lot of areas in the United States are not as fortunate. So um, we have Nashville Natives, and this is um, Andy Sudbrock's business based in Fairview, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and that's Nashville Natives. And also in Fairview, we have another um, nursery called Grow Wild. They, um, they include North American species in addition to um, some Middle Tennessee species. So there are a lot of choices and a lot of options mm -hmm with your native plants just right here in Williamson County. Tell us a little bit about Nashville Natives. Uh, Nashville Natives, we were a country farm out in, in uh, far western Williamson County. We have 15 acres and we grow uh, native plants because that's my passion. We love native plants. We love birds and butterflies and giving back uh, to the earth. So that's the, the way we do that and uh, we love being a part of Williamson County. Well, how did you get involved with this campaign? <laughs> you wanna answer that? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, well, one, one of uh, the fun parts of my job is kind of putting the pieces together. So when I um, got the information about National Planting Day from Keep America Beautiful, um, I started looking at resources and right on the Keep America Beautiful website are links that brought me to Nashville Natives and to Grow Wild. And so I contacted Andy and let him know about this program and that I was going to be organizing um, communication with Williamson County to get folks growing native plants. and. So I went over to Nashville Natives and we had a meeting. Mm -hmm. I got to see some native plants and we decided that a good way to get the word out was through fall plant sales mm -hmm. that are coming up. And so um, the first one was last Saturday at Owls Hill. Mm -hmm. And oh, it was so fun. I saw a pawpaw tree. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that. Now what is that? A, paw a pawpaw tree is a, is a great native tree. It, the pawpaw fruit is called uh, uh, custard banana or other <laughs> things. It's a really interesting fruit, and it's actually a tropical, a member of a tropical tree family. I'm getting all botanical here. <laughs> but it grows far north, and uh, 
you may have heard the song about the pawpaw patch. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, they grow in, in patches, and they're just Ooh. really cool fruits, uh, and we have them, and they're kind of hard to come by. Okay. <clears throat> wow. So when, it, mm. when are the times best to plant native? Um, planting natives is really good in the spring or in the fall. If you had to pick <clears throat> a time, it would be the fall. And the reason that uh, gardening and planting is best in the fall is that you, you put the plants in the ground, they're kind of going dormant, going to sleep, and they gently go to sleep, and mm. then they get to benefit from all of the winter and spring rain, and they come out in the spring without any transplant shock. Yeah. That's, fa that's fascinating. That is so cool. So what are some of the uh, things you're going to be doing during this planting program? Well, we have um, schools already who have created butterfly gardens. Um, other organizations and businesses are planning on planting natives mm -hmm. for songbirds, for insects, for honeybees, oh, wow. and for um, helping the monarch butterfly as well as other butterfly species. So there are some plant sales coming up because I know folks are going to want to know where and when uh -huh. they can buy some native plants. Uh -huh. And so our next event is October 5th. That's the Franklin Fall One Day Plant Sale at Historic Carnton Plantation. There is going to be a fantastic selection of perennials, and um, this is the Master Gardeners Association <coughs> doing this, partnering with Carnton. And so Nashville natives will be there, mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so folks, come on out and get some natives. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to give us the website one more time? Yes, that is keepwilliamsonbeautiful.org. We have lots of information about National Planting Day. Well, thank you very much, Andy and Lori, and we'll be right back. Did you know that you can borrow a book from another library? Books, audiobooks, and videos not owned by the Williamson County Public Library System may be borrowed from other libraries by patrons. No book can be requested within its first year of publication and the limits are 12 requests per calendar year. Check with the library staff for more details. Where can I find out about the Venus flytrap? Where can I research information on my business competitors? What is the safety record on the car I want? Where can I research careers? Where? Where? I'm all shook up. The Tennessee Electronic Library. That's where. And it's free to everyone in our state. Now go to your public library and, and find out how you can log on and, and get your password to a world of information just for living in our state. You can probably even figure out the password just by listening to my voice. Thank you so much for joining us today for Not Just Books. I hope you enjoyed the show and will join us again. Also, I'd like to thank our special guest today, Lori Rousseau, Williamson County Recyclist, Annie Subrock of Nashville Natives, Amy Saunders, Williamson County Archivist, and Rita Dozier, Executive Director of the Literacy Council of Williamson County. If you have any comments or suggestions for future programs, please contact me. The email address is notjustbooks at williamson-tn.org. You can leave comments at the library's website also, WCPL. TN.org. Until next time, explore your world and read.